Hola niños, who wants to do some science with me today? Today science is going to be really short, five minutes long, and it's very interesting. So I would do it if I were you. All right, so we're going to do observing and asking questions. How do scientists know so much? We got to start somewhere this year, right? So we're going to learn a little bit about people who actually do science, and they're called scientists. We're going to watch a video, and at the end I'm going to have two questions for you and when you figure it out, then you go to Seesaw and you record yourself answering the two questions. And they're not going to be hard, but I want you to be paying attention. So here we go. And when I press play, it's going to sound like a phone is ringing, but it's actually the video. Hi, it's Doug. Have you ever been walking like in a park or a forest? Oops, he got stuck. Hold and on. You found something that really got your attention? Well, that happened to me recently. I was in a forest, and I found this. It's a pine... Come on, Doug. Don't get stuck. But I've never seen a pine cone like this before. I was so curious. I had all kinds of questions. So I came home, and I got out some of my books that I have about trees. These books were written by scientists who study things like pine trees. Now, sometimes when I have a question, I find out that nobody knows the answer, and that's always exciting too. But a lot of times, there are answers to things that I'm curious about, and it's scientists who figured them out. Someone named Barina has a question about scientists. Let's give her a call now. Hi, Doug. Hi, Barina. I have a question for you. How do scientists know so much? That's a great question. To answer this question, it might be helpful to think about what scientists do when they work. Let me tell you a story about two scientists whose discoveries changed the way people think about Oop, he got stuck again. Bear with me, guys. You see this thing right here? You might know what it is. It's... Come on. A telescope. The telescope, the telescope, he said. To look up at the night sky. But it wasn't always used for that. In fact, when the telescope was first invented, one of the main ways people would use it was to watch for enemy ships coming from far away. Do you guys hear that? Before they used it to watch the stars, they would watch for enemy ships. Make sure you pay attention. Sorry, guys, it's just taking a while. This, this was Galileo. He was a scientist. Galileo was curious, and he wondered what he might see if he pointed the telescope up at the sky. One of the first things he decided to look at was the moon. Hmm. Sorry, boys and girls, I don't know why that's right, happening. He looked at the moon through his telescope. He wrote notes, and he made drawings of what he saw. He was amazed by all the details that... Okay, I'm going to pause it just for a few seconds, and maybe it'll stop stopping. Okay, let's go. That didn't work. Noticed. There we go. You see, before Galileo... Why is that happening? Most people thought that the moon was this round, perfectly smooth ball. More like a beautiful nightlight rather than some actual place. But by carefully looking at the moon, Galileo noticed lots of pointy bumps and shadows. He compared his drawings to things that he noticed here on Earth. And he realized what he was seeing on the moon were mountains, valleys, and hills. The moon wasn't some perfectly smooth light. It was an actual place with mountains and hills, just like the Earth. Galileo realized, maybe we could even go walk around on the moon someday. Galileo gave us new ideas about what the moon was really like. Now, here's another famous scientist. Her name was Mary Anning. 
She's known for being one of the greatest fossil hunters in all of history. Mary spent almost every day of her life, ever since she was a young girl, searching along the beach for it. Sorry, I messed it up. Fossils. Coming back. One day, there was a landslide. A huge piece of the cliff near the seashore had fallen down. Mary wondered, what if I go look over there? If I look carefully, will I find anything new? Digging through the rubble, Mary noticed some really strange markings in the rock. It was the fossil of a large skull with lots of sharp teeth. As she unearthed the entire fossil and put its bones together, Mary realized that it was the fossil of a giant reptile that had once lived in the ocean. This was unlike any creature alive today. It was an animal that had gone extinct. All her life, Mary kept looking carefully, finding more and more fossils of extinct animals. Mary Annie gave us new ideas about what animals on Earth had been like a long time ago. Okay, boys and girls, so we had two examples of two different scientists. The first one was Galileo, and the second one was Mary Annie. So my two questions are this. The first one is, what did scientists first use the telescope for? Remember, I asked you at the very beginning, kind of towards the beginning of the video, so the first thing that they use the telescope for, that's your first question. You ought to go back if you don't remember. And the second question was, what kind of hunter was Mary Anning? So the lady you see right here in the video, she was a hunter for what? All right, those are your two questions. When you figure those out, then record yourself telling me the answers to those two questions and you'll get a stamp. All right, have fun, everyone.